Okay. Okay, everyone. I want to say uh, hello to everyone who's joined us. Uh, 15 people who are currently joined in. We've got around about 25 students who are joining us today. I was just briefing everyone that the people who are joining us today are predominantly those people who have passed the entrance exam recently or are due to take the exam over the next two weeks. And I'm recognizing a hell of a lot of names in the attendee list here. So I've been communicating with people for quite some time. Uh, in other news, uh, I'm pleased to say that the situation with Britain leaving the EU is providing not the biggest headache I was expecting. The embassy in London is being very, very supportive and we're getting visa appointments within days of requesting them. So that's really good news that those kind of things which were potentially going to concern many British students studying internationally uh, are actually not appearing to be the case or the worst case scenario that we initially expected. Okay, so just to let everyone know, we are currently now live on YouTube. We are streaming live on Facebook right at this minute. And we've got uh, the people joining us via Zoom as well. I'm going to introduce everyone today and then we will start the recording as well. So I want to introduce Susanna and Helena from Masaryk University, who are part of the international office, who are instrumental in all of your applications, entrance exams, and also in terms of your daily life, getting as a, from an applicant right through to being a student at the university, and also managing you for the six years of your existence in Brno. And then I'm going to also introduce uh, Dylan. Dylan, who we've had on our last webinar, is a British student. Year four, Dylan, are we now? Fourth year student, you're on mute at the moment, Dylan, so we can't actually hear you, but uh, you're a fourth year student, British student at Masaryk University as well. And Dylan will talk more about his experience when we get to that section of the uh, presentation. Now, for everyone who's doing this for the first time, you can ask a question at any point, but what we will do is at we will verbalize all the questions at the end. So in the bottom, you will see a little Q&A feature, a Q&A. You can type in your question there. We will leave all questions to the end and then we'll read the question out so everyone can hear the question and then it'll be then free to answer. Where I can answer some questions, I will, but I will often delegate that to Susanna, Helena or Dylan because they're infinitely better at answering these types of questions than I would be. Alternatively, you can use the chat feature. If you wish to ask your question in real time and you wish to kind of have your voice transmitted to the world, that's perfectly fine. Just raise your hand and we can let you do that. So I think a lot of people have joined us and there are more people coming online on Facebook and YouTube now. So without any further ado, I'm going to pass Dealing over to Susanna. Without any further so, ado, I think a lot of people have joined us and there are more people Sorry, I'm getting a bit of feedback on Facebook and YouTube now. That's better. I was getting some feedback from the Facebook stream up there. So sorry about that, guys. But anyway, what I'll do is I'm going to hand over to Susanna now. And then we'll start the recording, uh, which will then go live on YouTube later on today or tomorrow. Uh, Susanna's got a really good presentation to introduce you guys to Masaryk University and the Faculty of Medicine in Brno. Okay, thank you. So hello, everybody. I would like to as well welcome you at this webinar. We are really happy that so many of you found the time and joined. So I will start with sharing my screen. So one second. So I hope everybody can see it, presentation. So as it was said, me, my name is Susanna Palackova and together with Helena Melicharova, we work at the International Office of Faculty of Medicine. So you will be in contact with us or you already have been when you already took the exam or we plan to do it. So first of all, I would like to tell you something about Brno. So I suppose not, Many of you had the chance to visit this city, especially this last year, the traveling was a bit complicated than we are used to. But I hope that, but I think that Brno is really definitely worth to see and to visit. And for a student, it has everything what you will need. Brno is the 
second largest city in Czech Republic. As you know, the first one is Prague, of course, the most famous. But Brno has around 400 inhabitants. So it's not as big, but what's a big advantage is that there are many, many students here. So we would say it's a student city comparing to Prague, which is a tourist city. So here you will really feel uh, comfortable when studying. And the fact that there are many young people here in Brno, it makes the city more, I would say, alive, more vivid. So it's really great to be here as a student. Uh, also, the location of the city is really convenient. So, because for example, me, I come from Slovakia. I came to Brno in 2007. And since then I'm here. So it's more than 10 years and I fell well, in love with the city. Uh, Brno has a good connection to all other main or popular cities in Europe. So if you want to go to Vienna, you can do so during the weekend. It takes two hours by a train or bus, or you can visit Bratislava, or you can go to Prague also. It takes like two and a half hours. So the connection is really, really great. There are buses that will take you directly to the Vienna airport. So I think this is a big plus. As mentioned, there are many, many students here as there are more universities in Brno. Uh, there are like around six, 65,000 students. So it's really, really a lot. So you can feel it when you are in the city that it's full of young people. And I must say that through the last years, like six or seven, the Brno really has grown. I mean, in a sense that there are many excellent restaurants here, many bistros, many cafes and bars. So it's really alive. Uh, especially now the restrictions concerning COVID are finally releasing. So we can do more and more now. And also the students, even the weather is getting better. So everyone is happy, all our students, that we can slowly live like we used to before. So about the Faculty of Medicine, I would like to tell you that um, maybe some of you already seen this. So it's located in a, a modern campus. Um, this main entrance, this red building, this, that's the main entrance, which you will see when you will come to Brno. In this campus and in these premises, you will spend your first two years, the preclinical years, I would say. So you have all classes here, because then in the higher years, you will be doing clinical rotations at the university hospitals. We have five of them. One of them you can already see here in this picture, because it's those white buildings directly connected to the Faculty of Medicine. It's also one of our teaching hospitals. So you can also see that this building is connected there by a bridge. So this bridge will take you to a shopping mall, which is also great because you can do some grocery shoppings. You will find there a food court with all types of restaurants. There is a bank, many banks, the shops, everything you can think of like a typical mall. So don't worry, you will have a nice time here. So there are really nice lecture halls. Everything is modern and, and nice, I would say. One important thing to mention is our simulation center. As I said before, the preclinical years, you will be spending most of the time at the campus. And within this campus, we have also a new brand new simulation center, which is uh, an educational facility for practical instruction. It has more rooms with special simulation equipment. It's really something unique and we are very proud of it. It was opened last year in 2000, October 2020. That means that already our this year, first year students are having classes there. They have their, their anatomy class. You can actually see the picture. Those are our first year students. So they are preparing then on this digital anatomy table, which will prepare them for the dis real dissections later, later on. Also dentistry students can use this facility, are using this facility, the simulation center, which you can also see on the picture. And also the higher years will be, what can be do done in a practical way will be done in the simulation center. So as you are already, Applied, you know that we offer two programs. It's the general medicine for six years and then dentistry for five years. All these programs are fully recognized in the EU, US and most of other countries. So maybe some interesting diagram I can show you is what 
countries the students come from. So this is the first year students, our first year students. So these we have admitted last year. So you can see it's a mixture of all nationalities from all the world, I would say. So I would say that I wouldn't worry that you will be the only international student here alone. No, we have more than 800 students here in our program at the Faculty of Medicines, but there are also other students in other faculties, other universities. So there are many um, students from all around the world in Brno. But if we look at this one of our first year students, uh, the majority last year came from Norway, then from Japan, and then the similar numbers from Italy, India, Germany, Israel, and so on. So it's really a mixture of, from the whole world. How to be admitted? So I know that some of you already took the exam. So this is something what you have already done. Some of you are still, still will be taking the exam next week. So this I will just really quickly say that of course you need to successfully finish your secondary school because otherwise you wouldn't be able to study at our university. Then this year, all the applicants need to apply with our agencies. So in this case, for, through Medical Doorway, and it's important to fill out the electronic applications. Those who are still taking the exams, uh, I will be uh, confirming the applications. Some of them I have already confirmed, some of them I will do in, on Monday. So uh, as, the, as last year was quite complicated, we had to adapt when it comes to entrance examination. So we offered, the online version of our entrance examination test. And as the COVID-19 is still not like fully over, we kept this form also this year. So the online, so the exam is online, but the format of the test is the same like it would be on paper. So all of you need to take a test from chemistry and biology, and then you can choose between physics and mathematics. So those of you who will be having taking the exam next Monday and Tuesday, you should have already received your invitation email with the instructions. Also, maybe please check your spam folder because it really happens that the email falls there. Those of you who are still taking the exam next weekend, the UK region, you will receive the invitation on Monday when I will be processing it. So, um, invitation, yes, one week prior. So each test contains 40 multiple choice questions. The only difference is mathematics that has 20 questions. And there is always one answer correct and there are no negative points for a wrong answer. So this preparation maybe is, is not so important right now because you need to be already prepared. But if you still have time, you can have at least look at the sample tests on our website where you can see the format and how it looks like and what to expect. And we also offer e-learning preparatory courses. So once you take the exam, it takes about, uh, so we try to have the results within five days. So within five days, you will know whether you are admitted or not. You will see the status in directly in your application. You will also receive an official email notification from the system whether you are admitted or not. For those of you who are admitted, I will start to prepare the admission documents for you. Some of you might already received it, those of you who already took the exams and were successful. So the important document there is the invoice for the tuition fee. Yeah. So really please follow the deadline specified on this invoice because the payment of the tuition fee secures your seat at our faculty. It means that if you do not pay on time, we take it as that you are not accepting the admission and we will cancel it. Maybe important thing to mention is that you can pay separately for each semester. So you can pay just for the first semester within the deadline specified on the invoice. So as we know, it was already mentioned that due to Brexit, now even UK students need to apply for visa. So please, those of you who need to do so, do, do so immediately after receiving the admission documents. All these documents are created for visa purposes. So you will have all the necessary documentation there. So the other important thing is, so there are two things that I would like to mention, is the verification of your secondary school education. Uh, within your admission papers package, if I can call it like there, you will have their instructions, what we need from you, what kind of documents we need for 
verification. So really, please follow the instructions there. And I'm sure also Mr. Ambrose will help you with this, with the verification. You need to bring all those documents latest at the enrollment in September. If you do not bring those documents, we cannot enroll you. This is something really important. And if you facing some issues, maybe the school is issuing the documents late due to COVID, anything can happen. Of course, let us know in August so we are informed. Uh, there is also an administrative fee that needs to be paid. We will, send, we will be sending a link for the payment via email to all the admitted students later on. Another thing, important thing is the accommodation. So we have the option for the first year students to stay at our dormitories, but it's not compulsory. This is really up to you, whether you decide to find a private accommodation or stay at the dormitories. I will, in the admission documents, you will have also the instructions when to do the reservation. If I am correct, the reservation will take place beginning of August. From the 2nd of August, you can reserve a room in case you want to stay and use this option at our dormitories. The closest one is the Wienerska House of Residence. This is really the closest one to the campus. You can see it on the picture. It's 15 minutes away from the campus. So it takes 15 minutes by a trolley bus and then 10 minutes to get to the city center. So we, it has a nice location and most of the student medical students stay there. Or if you, you can stay there, for example, for the first semester. And once you know more people in Brno, you can then switch and find a private accommodation. But really do not leave it. If you want to have a private accommodation, do not leave it at the last minute because already in July, there are many students coming to Brno from all different countries countries and they are trying to find the accommodation so really try to do it quickly if you want to have a private accommodation if you don't find it you can still use the option of our dormitories so the first days in Brno what I would like to say to that is that those of you who are interested to learn Czech language because Czech language is actually part of your curriculum you will have Czech language classes for four years so it's good maybe to start with it early. So we offer an intensive Czech language course. It starts two weeks before the tuition starts. So those of you who are interested can take part in this course, language intensive Czech language course, and it will like, help you with for the first semester. Yeah, we will be sending more information about it and how to apply also via email later on. Uh, some of you maybe already know there will be an orientation week organized by our student association, by MIMSA. Uh, it will be week prior the tuition starts, so it will start from 6 September. We really highly recommend all of you to come for this orientation week. Uh, at the same week, the enrollments will take place. You will know your enrollment day on your admission, from your admission documents. So everybody needs to come on the day that is mentioned there on those documents. So there will be enrollments taking place in the morning and then in the afternoon, MIMSA will take over and they already now they have plans on special events. Hopefully the COVID situation will allow it, not like last year when it was online. <laughs> so hopefully this year it will be again like it used to be before. Uh, so it will really help you to get to know the people, to adapt the city, so really do not miss it. And anyway, you need to come for the enrollment that week. So please come from the 6th of September. And as mentioned, then the tuition starts the next Monday on the 13th of September. And yes, and that's probably it from me. So if you would have any questions regarding the admission process, you can always write us an email at admission at med.muni.cz. So it will, I will receive the email or Helena and we will always try to respond as soon as possible. Please do not... Uh, uh, forget to join our Facebook group. We are sending also this information. We have a Facebook group for freshers, for all the students, admitted students, and uh, we will be providing more information there. So your start will be smooth. So, and but we have also our uh, faculty Facebook website or Instagram. So you are welcome 
to write there if you have any questions. So that's everything from me. And maybe I will give the word to Helena if she's there, if she wants to say something more that comes to her mind. Susanna, do we want to show the, the, the simulation center as well? Because I've got the video ready to go. So after Helena's uh, said a few things, I can then show everyone the video for the simulation center and then we can get right into the questions and then get Dylan's contribution as well. How does that sound? Yeah, I think it's perfect, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, actually, thank you, Susanna. I think that she provided a lot of information. Uh, I'm here to provide you the description of the programs, if you need, how the uh, how the programs are divided in case you are interested in this. Uh, but we can, uh, as Ben said, we can firstly see the video and then we can... Uh, we can I'm just looking at the list of people who've actually signed up today and who's on them. We've got people from Hong Kong, we've got people from the UK, from India, from Nigeria, from South Africa. So there's a huge, really eclectic mix of people who have all applied to the faculty this year. And that goes to show, and I mean, you looked at the graphics before, how attractive the faculty is to students from across the world and how... Uh, well thought of the program is. This is only one of very few programs in Europe which is US federal loan approved and that's because the university has a very high US MLE passing rate and hence I know Ali was meant to join us today who is an American student but he can't make it because he's got exams coming up on Monday but you know this goes to, uh, not only about the UK but sorry US but it goes to show exactly how well the university is thought of in the UK because there are multiple links with British hospitals as well. Uh, and actually one of the advantages, if there is any, of Brexit is that a lot of students will have perhaps more access to the UK now than ever before because everyone is treated largely the same, except if you're British or Irish, then you do have a slight advantage. But anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to show the simulation of centre first, and then we'll then get straight into the questions and then we'll bring Dylan in to discuss about his route or you know, his experiences over the last four years and what his plans are moving forward. Yeah. So if you just give me two seconds, guys, while I just do this, and hopefully this time it works and doesn't freeze like it did last time. So can everyone see a black screen? Okay, everyone. So that was great. So that's the brand new clinical simulation center at the Faculty of Medicine at Masaryk University. And there really is no 
other facility like that in many universities that I've seen. Certainly not seen anything in the UK that's at that particular level. Not many places have their own helipad, but they do in Brno. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dig into some of the questions that you guys have asked. And we have plenty of time for the questions now. Uh, we don't want to keep you hanging on just by death by PowerPoint all afternoon. It really is a question of getting into your questions. I will go through the questions one by one, and then we'll discuss them in a uh, We'll discuss them where we need to discuss them or answer them quite simply because some of the questions are quite quick to answer some are going to be more going to be more difficult to answer someone said when is the enrollment well we've seen that when the enrollment is going to be it's going to be the second week of september or uh is it going to be online it has to be present in person at this moment in time everything is planned in person back to normal as vaccinations are continuing and as the covid uh, rates are are decreasing Bar any major major uh, difference, that will still be the case. That will be in person. Now, that does mean that you do have to think about your visa applications where you need them fairly urgently. And I know some countries' visa applications are massively delayed. I know there's a, currently an issue in India and in South Africa, but it's a question of just keeping in contact with the Czech embassy in that country to determine what the current rules are regarding visa, visa uh, appointments and also migration rules from one country to the next. But as I said, at this moment in time, everything is planned to be in person. We've got to get back there and everything is being planned to get back there normal from now on. Helena, is there anything else you wish to add? Yes, uh, I would like to say that uh, we already, actually uh, the medical faculties, they used to have an ex exception from the law. So uh, uh, last year we had online several we had the online lectures, several practices, but most of the practice uh, practice were in person. Students were divided into smaller groups, so we never stopped the uh, we never stopped taught uh, in person. And uh, since last week, we are again fully open, and we uh, we 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 are teaching uh, teaching students in person. Uh, hopefully, as Ben said, uh, thanks to the vaccination. Uh, we are planning to to start next uh, next academic year in person. So please uh, think of it seriously that you have to really come to Bruno uh, in order you can start your studies. Yeah, we'll keep obviously any, as things progress, more information will be coming about about the enrollment anyway. It's still we're still only May, so. Um... Yeah, the information will be provided in uh, in our freshers Facebook groups. Uh, Facebook group, as Susanna said, so it will be fine once you are accepted. Uh, please join uh, join our Facebook group in order you can get the all the information service. Priority for the moment is get through the exam and if accepted, pay that first semester tuition fee and and get the documents required for your visa, sure. which I'll just a little bit later yeah. into this webinar. Okay, for those that don't know what you need, right? What available payment methods is it possible to pay in increments? Or, yes, it is. You pay in two installments per year in the Czech currency. For those that don't know how to make international payments easily, there are so many third party providers which can provide you significant savings. I personally use one that I'm not going to mention on here because they don't they don't sponsor me. And I'm not going to actually also advise people to use a service openly. But I use a third party payment provider, which is very quick, takes less than 24 hours for money to arrive in country. For some countries, it arrives in minutes and it saves a lot of money compared to using my bank, um, which is really advantageous. But you can pay basically per semester. So on a six year program, 12 payments of the tuition fees across the duration of that program. Arshi, good to see you, Arshi. Could you please tell me if students from Malaysia need to quarantine upon arrival in the Czech Republic? Students from Malaysia would need a visa anyway, even uh, without COVID rules. The rules differ depending on what colour the country is coded as by the Czech Ministry of Health and Ministry of Interior. So what we say now might actually be different than it would be in September. So I would suggest we look at what the rules are much closer to the time. At this moment in time, you have to have a PCR test prior to, depart prior to departing for the Czech Republic, I think within 72 hours of your departure and then you have to have one on arrival in the Czech Republic and then there's about two more in the five to ten days afterwards if I remember rightly I, I have not looked at the uh, rules for a few days 
but effectively be prepared to have a PCR test before going on arrival and multiple ones for the first few weeks while you're there. I think students are being tested anyway, aren't they, during the curriculum at the moment? Students are tested, uh, but I suppose if, uh, if students will be vaccinated after the arrival day, nobody would, would be needed to stay in quarantine. Okay. There's no hotel quarantine system in the Czech Republic at the moment. Self-isolation, isn't well, it? Uh, until now, students who had a positive test, uh, they they had uh, one uh, dormitory dedicated to those students. Now we have a zero. Okay, perfect. That's good. Okay, Ria, how will the exam be proctored? Uh, and how do you, do you have to download any software? No, there's no video monitoring, but there is behind the scenes monitoring of your activity. Uh, it's not proctoring software, but believe me, if more than one computer logs in, you will they will know. But basically, if you log into the system through the email that you've been sent and take the exam there, everything works really smoothly. And there's a question relative to this one further down as well. So uh, I'll deal with that one. Does the school offer financial aid? There is no true what we call financial aid available in terms of the kinds of financial aid that you're referring to in terms Actually, I'm sorry, since this yeah, year, there, there is. is but there is something, and Helena's going to tell about that. It's a little bit different than what financial aid often means. But what, Helena, can you tell us a little bit more about the opportunities for students? Oh, uh, there are there are there is a new financial aid uh, for the students from the third countries that they prove uh, that they that have students they that have a super super background. They pass the entrance exam, and uh, they will prove to rector's office that. Uh, Let's say they have a, have a problems with the payments. The only issue of this is uh, this financial aid uh, is uh, 100,000 Czech crowns, but only for the first year. It means that it doesn't cover the whole tuition fee and, uh, and will not follow uh, mm -hmm. for the next years. And it's dedicated for the, for the people from the um, out, outside of the Europe from the like a third year countries. Yeah. So this is the news. The other financials are uh, financial um, aids are for dormitory, for students with a good study average, for the for the research, for the representation of the faculty. So they are small, but not the financial aid in the uh, as uh, if you consider it for the like a school fee payment. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the entrance exam, once we choose within maths or physics, can we quit and then choose another subject? No, it, but it's not advisable to do that. Helena, explain why. Yeah, well, you have to, you have to, because once you start the subject, you have to complete it. Yeah, you have to complete it. You cannot interrupt and try another one. So once you start the subject, you have to complete it. Otherwise, it's, um, it's quit after the 60 minutes by itself. Yeah, so you have to know uh, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to do the test from the physics or from math, you need to know it in advance. Depends, of course, uh, how did you pre uh, how much you prepared, how did you study? Yeah. Someone's asked, where can I get, where can I find information on private accommodation? There's actually a number of places which can advise you on uh, that are specifically designed for students uh, that are coming to the Czech Republic. My advice about private accommodation, however is arrive in the Czech Republic, move into the dorms and deal with the private accommodation once you've settled in the Czech Republic, because there are two reasons for that. Number one is that you need the uh, accommodation certificate to apply for a visa, and that's easier if you've got it from the university itself. The other thing as well is when you arrive in country and you've gone through the process of having your uh, applying for your residency permit and you've got your visa, et cetera, it's a lot easier then to sign a contract for a private apartment should you want it. And also you can look around the city and think about which area you want to, want to stay in. You know, it's uh, perhaps meet the right people that you want to move into if you do want to move in with other people. So we, we have a collaboration with an organization in Czech Republic, which can help find a private apartment for you, whether that's as a, a one bedroom or a share for a few of you. But that is something which is much better done once you've arrived in country and all the students I've dealt with in the past have moved into the student dorms initially, especially if they're coming from a third country and need a visa, 
and then we'll arrange private apartment once in country. In fact, a lot of the landlords want to meet you in person as well before they will let you sign the contract. And you can only do that once you're in the Czech Republic, but it is very easy to do. All calculators allowed for the entrance exams, they are. And then someone's asked a question about USMLE exams. Helena, does the course integrate studies of the USMLE examination? Can you, I'll perhaps deal in as well. Of course. Talk about that. Yeah, of course, we, we started to integrate the uh, USMLE uh, questions uh, since the first year. So uh, uh, in the anatomy curriculum, we already integrated the USMLE requirements. Uh, then it continues in a pathophysiology, um, pathology, and the other courses. We have a, we are very supportive. Um, we have also scholarship uh, regarding the USMLE exams. Once you pass them successfully, we will pay you back all of the expenses that you had. So regarding the US, USMLE, we try to push the students to pass first and uh, step number one and step number two within your studies. Uh, in addition, there's also a possibility to take books out from the library. Uh, if you're interested in doing the US assembly, there's a specific bookshelf or collection of books which are kept up to date every single year, um, available just for those students who are interested in sitting the US assembly. So there's very good support, I would say, on the whole. Perfect. Next question, quite a simple one. Where can I get the accommodation letter to be able to apply for my visa? It comes automatically in your offer paperwork from the university. So in the offer paperwork you get, it's a big batch of paperwork, there'll be some documents which are written in Czech language. Some of the, one of those is your study confirmation, which basically proves that you've been accepted to study at Masaryk University and the embassy will require that. And another document will be from the student residency office, which basically guarantees accommodation. Both of those documents are in Czech language, so you can't confuse them with the other documents. The embassy will need both of those. Funnily enough, booking your appointment for that, often the embassy wants to see a scan of both of those documents before they'll even give you an appointment because they don't want the appointment time to be wasted. So if you're doing it from the embassy in the UK, I will be sending those documents to the embassy anyway. Uh, if you're doing it from out overseas or another country outside of the UK, then you'll have to, when you put the request for the appointment, you'll have to scan those documents along with a copy of your passport as well. Okay, so where do students go after graduating and what are the career pathways available to them? I'm going to hand over to Helena on that, who's had hundreds of students graduate from Masaryk University who are working very Yes. Uh, of course, it depends if you want to return to your home country, it's possible. Uh, it's possible to stay in the Czech Republic, one option. Another option is go to any other country in European Union, in the United States or in UK. We have a direct pathway to British hospitals, uh, no matter um, Brexit. Uh, the British uh, hospitals needs uh, our graduates, so you do not need to be British citizen. Uh, in order you can uh, you can start to work in uh, in UK, yeah. So it depends on you. If you want to continue as a PhD student in uh, Brno Czech Republic, we have a, a research center as an integral part of the campus. So you can uh, you can be member of the international team. I'm absolutely sure that Dylan has something to say about that. Specifically um, I, about about the uh, training pathway to the UK, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of friends who, who have trained who have done their sixth year pre graduation practices, which are a compulsory part of the final year, and they've done those in the UK um, through the excellent the pathway that we have, the connection we have to um, NHS trusts in uh, in Liverpool. So it's a really excellent pathway, and, and many of those students who have continued after their studies. Uh, who have got foundation uh, contracts in those hospitals in Liverpool. So some really great um, opportunities there. And again, in the US as well, there's some good partnerships. I suppose the doors are open, so it depends. Of course, you have to think that uh, your acceptance always depends on your study results. How do you promote yourself? Yeah, we, we, can, give you, we can give you clinical experience and up to, as I said. Yeah. Uh, can we go to another question? 
one thing I'll say about Brexit there, guys, that's at, Brexit has given a slight advantage to those of you who perhaps were not from a European country, because previously applying for jobs in the UK, there were effectively Britain and then 27 other countries in front of you. So if you came from India or South Africa or Australia or Hong Kong or South Korea and tried to work in the UK, you were effectively 29th in the list of consideration for jobs. You are now joint third with everyone who's not British or Irish. Uh, and as there is a, a large doctor vacancy in the UK, and that has actually been compounded by Brexit because a lot of European doctors, European passport holders are not looking at the UK at the moment, it perhaps does provide a pathway for those students who traditionally would look at the UK if you come from an Anglophone country or from a country that was uh, or is in the British Commonwealth. So you'll tend to find there are multiple options for you to come and work across hospitals all over the UK, especially if you look to work in an area of the country which is considered less popular. So there are some parts of the UK which have higher levels of doctor vacancies than others. Obviously, the big cities like Manchester, Birmingham, London have less doctor vacancies because they've got the larger hospitals and are more attractive. But if you're looking at more provincial areas, remote areas, perhaps in the uh, rural areas, you'll find that there are a larger number of doctor vacancies there. OK, right. So this is an issue, Helena, which I was mentioning before. Uh, the Czech embassy in South Africa is currently not accepting visa applications for students because it's considered extreme risk for COVID. Uh, if... Uh, the student doesn't get the chance, doesn't get a clearance for a visa because they're not even allowing students to apply for visas. Can we carry the offer over till next year? Yes, from this reason, uh, from this reason, we can interrupt your admission and postpone your your uh, start, your acceptance into the September two thousand and twenty. Yeah, in case of uh, you, in case of epidemiological situation. Um, you will, uh, in case you will not obtain the visa on time to, mm. to start properly, we can do that. There are some countries which are not even allowing people to book appointments because of the COVID variants in their nation. Yeah. But, uh, hopefully, just keep trying speaking to the Czech embassy and then hopefully as things change, then we'll be in a better position uh, to have more information later down the line. It does take 60 days to get the visa after, after the appointment. So if you've not had appointment by the end of July, we should probably action that, or beginning of July, I should say, we should really action that uh, uh, in advance. Is the, is the AstraZeneca vaccine recognized by the Czech Republic? And can it we is. get vaccinated there? Yeah, it is. I've had the AstraZeneca vaccine waiting for my second jab, but can we as a student get vaccinated there on arrival or is it a question of students should be try to get vaccinated before they arrive in the Czech Republic? I suppose it's better to be vaccinated before the arrival. It yeah, in order, uh, in order you can prove it and you do not need to stay in quarantine. We do not know what will happen. So I would, I would suggest to, to have both doses uh, before, before arrival. The uh, NHS, the UK has introduced the new COVID passport on the NHS app as well. So if, you've, if you are a UK student or you're living in the UK and you use the NHS, please do download the NHS app onto your phone. When you travel, you simply get a little barcode that will be scanned. And this is preparing for the future of traveling more commonly from the summer onwards. We've answered the question. Rita's asked about uh, calculator. Yes, calculator is allowed, but you don't need a periodic table. Any formulae or any elements that you need to answer a question in the exam are provided in the question itself. You don't need a separate periodic table. Can we apply for the accommodation aid before we start? I don't think that's the case, is it, Helena? No, no, no. Uh, everybody, doesn't matter if you stay in dormitory or in your private apartment, if you, if you apply for the dormitory aid, you will get it, but uh, the deadline is in November. Yeah, okay. so after, after the tuition starts. Okay, uh, maths has 20 questions, but you still get an hour. Yeah, it's just that the questions are double weighted. So... Mm -hmm. In biology, chemistry, physics, each question is worth one mark. In maths, they are worth two. So either you pick up more marks there or you uh, don't do as well. It depends on how, how you do. But basically, it's the same timeline. It's just there's less questions. Uh, but the, each question obviously takes longer to answer. Someone's asked, is accommodation fee separate from the 300,000 Czech krone? Yes, the accommodation fee is separate. Can you tell us a little bit more about the cost of uh, the dormitory accommodation, Helena? Uh, well, uh, the accommodation per month 
bed costs about 150 euros. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the living the living cost is not so it's not so ex expensive. Daily food is eight euros. Uh, accommodation 150. Uh, students, public transportation, passport. It's uh, for three months. It's 40 euros. So uh, I suppose the living is quite comfortable. But also, if you rent an apartment, I don't know, Dylan, you rent a private apartment, don't you? I do. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you how you're kind of paying and uh, your choices on that. And do you do you, do you are you have you got a flatmate or do you live on your own? No, I live by myself. And actually, when I when I first moved here, I I you know I, I moved into private accommodation from the beginning. Um, quite a bold move looking back, and I think you know considering the the circumstances now, I, I wouldn't really recommend that um, because obviously you guys all need a visas. Um, but for us, it was a bit simpler. Um, but yeah, I think you know. Dorms, I would absolutely recommend dorms, uh, if not to stay there for the, you know, the full duration of your studies, at least to try it out for one semester or for a year, make some friends, then you can live with others or you can live by yourself. This is what I'm doing. I'm living by myself um, in private accommodation. Um, so yeah, as, as, as you, you know, get used to everything here, as you get used to get familiar with the city, um, you'll learn more about the kind of best locations and the best um, areas which are close to tram links to the university and to the hospitals. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about you know whether to choose private accommodation or, or dorms at the moment. I think dorms are probably the best best option. There are other student accommodation um, developments going on, um, so I'm sure Mimsa will will put information about this kind of stuff as well um, nearer the time throughout summer when you guys are, are looking to to move and to to come here. So um, yeah, stay tuned for all that stuff. Someone's asked a question about visas. Is it possible to apply for visa on arrival in the Czech Republic? No, it isn't, I'm afraid. You have to have the visa before you come. Now, I was speaking to the embassy about, in London about this. Traditionally, if you didn't get your visa in time, but you came from a country which at least allows you a certain amount of time in the Czech Republic without a visa, so the USA, Canada, now the UK, Israel, for example, you could enter the Czech Republic for 90 days visa-free, and then if you'd already started the visa process in your own country, when you perhaps returned home at Christmas, you'd be able to collect the visa within that 90 days and then come back out to the Czech Republic for semester two with the visa and your passport and re-enter the Czech Republic on that visa. That wouldn't be possible if you needed a visa simply to even enter the Czech Republic. Now, the problem with that is at the moment is that based on the current COVID regulations, they may change over the next few weeks, even if you came from Canada, the US, the UK, you wouldn't be allowed to enter the Czech Republic because of the current COVID restrictions, even for your 90 day period, you would need the, the, the long term visa. So it is not possible. And you've got to collect the visa from the embassy at which you apply for it. So if you apply in London, you collect it in London. If you apply in Abu Dhabi, you pick it up in Abu Dhabi. If you apply in Ottawa, you pick it up in Ottawa. So that's how the rules are now currently working. But uh, that, that is why it's priority to get the paperwork ready. Now, I will be emailing everyone as well before the coming exams about starting to think about the paperwork they're going to need to apply for a visa. Because while we wait for the university paperwork, we can get started on your paperwork from your own country or from the UK, which will speed the process up uh, significantly. Once you've had the visa appointment, it will take two months before your visa is issued. Sometimes it's a little bit quicker, sometimes it's a few, day, few days longer, but 60 days is the given time that you have to wait. How do you apply for the USMLE and who is eligible? Anyone's eligible as long as they're signed off by the university, but Helena, you can tell us a little bit more about applying to sit the USMLE exams. <laughs> of course, eligibility is the medical student, yeah. So um, there is a website, the, the form that you have to fill it, and uh, you will be studying uh, by yourself to, and uh, with our support, with our help. So eligible is any medical student. Step one and step two, you should pass within while you are studying. Step three, you have to, uh, you have to pass after graduation, yeah? But everybody, every medical student is eligible. Yeah. You are. You will be preparing while studying uh, at Masaryk University at medical faculty. As I said, you will be preparing since the first year, since you start the anatomy subject, and then you continue 
you know, pathophysiology, pathology, and the other courses. So we will help you to pass, uh, pass those steps. The passport is ex expiring. Uh, mm -hmm. well, the passport expiring in September, October. I, I'm reading, reading it out so everyone can hear, but someone's got a passport expiring in September, October 21, and the renewal will be done first week of June. Hence the question is, if the passport number changes in the application and the actual passport number, any issues? Now, it's not usually a problem uh, because the embassy will put the, in that case, the embassy will be putting the visa in your new passport. My advice is when you, if you have it in the first week of June, that shouldn't be a problem because uh, where are we now? You wouldn't have, you probably wouldn't have the visa appointment in that week anyway. However, my recommendation would be when you go for the visa appointment, take your expired passport and the new passport with you. So if there's any documents with the old passport number on, you can at least show them the old passport and then show them the new one as well. I can't see there being a major issue with that, Helena, if they take the old passport and the new one to the embassy. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's fine. That should be okay. Yeah. Uh, we've answered the next question already about will we be prepared for USMLE? There are mechanisms to prepare you for USMLE. So we've dealt with that question already. There's no negative marking on the entrance exam. So please don't ask the question, where did I lose my marks? You don't lose marks. You just don't gain them. You start off with zero and you work your way up. You have ample time for each question. Okay. There are 40 questions in maths. Sorry, 40 questions in biology, 40 questions in chemistry, 20 in maths or 40 in physics. That is one over one minute, well over one minute per question. OK, just just set, set your stopwatch for a minute and see how long an actual minute is to read 10 words on a question. OK, and then the four answers. So you have ample time to read the question, read the answers and then make your decision about which you believe is the correct my advice is on on the exam read the question two or three times before you even attempt it make sure you fully understand what the question is read each answer there's no trick questions there's only one correct answer per question if you're a bit confused and you may not know exactly which is the right one go through the process of removing the wrong answers first so I definitely know it's not B. I definitely know it's not D. Oh, and it certainly isn't E. So it gives me, say, A and C. Then you've got a 50-50 chance of getting the right question or the right answer to that question. And because there's no negative marking, you've got nothing to lose. Uh, someone becomes 18 years old in October. Any paperwork to be done in advance of the application because of being 17 years old and they're applying for the visa? Helena, I, I believe this should be okay in that particular case. It should be okay. The only issue what I see is that probably your parents have to have to arrive together with you in order they, for example, sign instead of you the accommodation contract because okay. once you are not 18, you can't do that. Okay. Yeah, but the application and the other procedure is okay. Someone said, if I get my student visa delayed by a few months, can I start my studies online and join later in person? Not, there's no plan at the moment for that. Believe me, you do not want to start the studies late. The volume of work, especially in year one, as Dylan will vouch for, is substantial, and you do not want to delay it. If your visa gets delayed because of coronavirus situation in a particular country, you need to let us know early. If your visa is delayed because you've delayed booking the appointment or you've taken too long to apply for the various documents, there's nothing we can do about that, okay? Uh, the Czech Embassy have a list of everything you need on the website. And for those students, I email out the kind of documents you need as well. Uh, and those documents need to be processed appropriately. So it's a question of making sure that when we say order a document, you order that document without delay, okay? And then, and then we get you an appointment at the embassy. If the embassy come back and give you an appointment time, which really is not viable, then you need to recontact the embassy and explain the situation. Please also copy myself in, because often we're able to speak to the embassies and sometimes we do get appointment times brought forward as well, but it varies from one embassy to the other. 
Uh, is there any support provided by the university on arrival to move in if we're coming to check for the first time? MIMSA is a fantastic resource. So once you've moved into the, the accommodation and coming to the university, you'll meet Dion and the colleagues from MIMSA who will do a hell of a lot of work with you to make you feel kind of at home in Brno and the Czech Republic. Dion, I think perhaps you can give us a bit of a bit of a kind of a rundown of the kind of things you do at MIMSA to help students settle into the Czech Republic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Fadon, I suppose that Zuzana, Zuzana already mentioned that there is an orientation week prior to the, prior the tuition start. So you have one week together when the MIMSA will help you to surround the city, and they will help you to open the bank account, uh, they will help you to get a public transportation card, you will uh, meet together with the other students. And also, Zuzana told you, please. Once you are accepted, immediately join our Facebook Freshers group. We will provide, you can ask any questions and we will provide you all support that you would need, even though we will give you the links for the private accommodation service. We will also, uh, we will also give you guides how to work with our information system, which, you, which is essential and you will need it. So no worries, we will take care of you like, uh, like uh, of our own kids. <laughs> yeah, just to echo that, I was uh, I was in charge of organizing the orientation week for MIMSA last year. It was a bit different to how it will be this year. Hopefully this year, everything went back to normal with the normal in-person events. But exactly like you heard, you've heard a few times now, during that one week in, in orientation week, in the mornings, there will be uh, the enrollment at campus um, and the study office will give you information about when to come in. And during the afternoon and evenings, they'll be filled with events which have been organized by MIMSA. So social events are talking about to get to know your teammates, uh, not teammates, your, your colleagues and classmates and, um, and, and, and get to know upper year students as well. So things like uh, mobile phone, banks, uh, bank account, uh, accommodation, all these things uh, we'll, we'll go through. And um, uh, the group, the Facebook group that has been mentioned a few times as well is, is, is jointly run by the study office and the students at MIMSA as well. So there's going to be a lot of support um, for you guys. You're muted, I think, Ben. There we go. Yeah, sorry. I was trying to figure out where to... I've got different places to unmute, but... Right, so one of us said about third party for payments. I use an organisation called TransferWise. I think it's just now called WISE, but there are various other organisations which allow you to move money from one account to the other and save compared to what banks pay. But not that I'm saying you should use TransferWise. I can't go on and recommend you to use or uh, another provider, but that's what I use when I make international uh, money transfers because I've got my own account with it, it's completely free account set up, and the, the, the transaction fees are generally a lot lower. But please do check speak to your bank as well. Sometimes depending on the kind of bank account you have, you might find it cheaper. And TransferWise doesn't work in every country as well. Okay. Can students work while studying? Uh, I'm going to say no to this. Okay. And I'm not going to say no because there's any kind of one sitting there from the employment office hitting you over the head if you're taking a job from a check. <laughs> well, uh, maybe Dylan can... Uh... Yeah confirm or not to confirm uh, I'm doing the, this job for 20 years and um, I haven't met so many medical students that they had a chance and time and power to work a part of the studies yeah I think the medicine is full-time job and you will be more than happy if you pass all of the, the courses successfully so you can of course um, uh, if if you are very clever and uh, if you have a good memory, of course you can. But it's the, the big problem, the big problem is you are snowed under with work. You are going to have that much work that there will be no time. And the other thing as well is the salaries in the Czech Republic are lower compared to the UK, Canada, the US, Hong Kong, Japan. They're a lot lower. So. You might, you might work 10 hours and get paid 30 pounds for work in a service type job. Then you've got to determine whether earning up 30 pounds was a better use of your 10 hours than preparing for the next anatomy or biophysics exam. So that's the kind of thing that you've got to kind of consider when you're saying, can I work or not? Okay. Yeah. I uh, think all of, the, all of the free time, leisure time should be dedicated to sport and to relax. Yeah. 
because you should understand that the, the first three years, your timetable will be since the morning till the evening. Mm -hmm. So the only uh, time for work would, would, would be weekends. Yeah. And uh, actually weekends you need for studies and for the relax. So don't count mm -hmm. with the job. Yeah, just, just to follow on, I, I get asked this question a few times actually, and I think um, the reasons why students ask, I'm not sure the student who asked this question, I'm not sure what their background is, but a lot of the reasons I get asked is because students ask about the tuition fees and they ask about, you know, is it possible to supplement my fees and, you know, sort of pay, pay my way as is, as is possible in the UK in some scenarios, it is possible to have a part-time job. Um, so I think it's a fair enough question, but the reality, like Helena said, it's, you know, some days you are starting not waking up, but actually starting at 7.30 or seven o'clock in the morning. Some days you're finishing at seven in the evening. So they're very, very packed days and, and you feel very drained. Um, you know, we'll put you in touch with, with first year students currently who are finishing their first year and they'll give you the you know, information firsthand on how things are. So I think for the first two, probably three years, it's, it's very, very unlikely to hold the job down. Uh, beyond then, yeah, there is a bit more time um, because you transition into your clinical years. So you have uh, more free hours in the day, um, but it's still intensive um, and it's still very difficult to hold down a job um, but there are possibilities, but, but definitely not in the first year, I think. Someone said, are there single rooms in um, Vinaraska and does it come with a kitchen? In it? I've never been in the dorms, uh, so I couldn't tell you, but perhaps someone else can. Well, there are two, usually there are two double bed units connected with the one kitchen uh, and the bathroom. So... All rooms are double bed, so you pay for bed, not for room. So if you want to stay single, you have to pay. You have to pay two beds. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't guarantee that you'll have a your own room when you start the course initially, because all the students are around. Often students then will filter out into private accommodation and single, effectively de facto single rooms become available as we go. Uh, but that's not something you can guarantee at the start, just because people are arriving, trying to get settled uh, and then orientate themselves. Uh, OK, someone has said, can I come to check around mid-August and then we'll be able to stay in the accommodation? This is if, if you've got a visa and you want to come early, I don't think it's possible to stay in the student accommodation in August. Helena, is it? Yeah, it is. It's not a problem. Usually Ju July, July, August, uh, there are students, there are living students uh, for internships or some Erasmus students. Usually uh, dormitories are partially, partially empty. So okay. it's not a problem. One thing I'll say about that will be that if you're applying and we need, if you're not an EU citizen, if you're British or you need a visa, then, and you've got your visa, the visa becomes valid from a certain date. If you want to arrive before that visa valid date from, then you need to go back and speak to the Czech embassy and see if there's a way that you can enter and have that visa stamped when you enter prior to that date becoming yeah. evident. It's a bit of an awkward one. because but This is the other issue. The question was about the staying in the dormitory. Yeah. So it's That's possible. From a procedural perspective, uh, doing that, there may be some issues if, if it's a student who needs a visa. What's the pass point to be accepted? So Helena, for medicine and dentistry, what's the passing grade for the entrance exam? Well, uh, uh, this year it's 70%, uh, the pass mark. Uh, it's uh, so, pardon, pardon, 65%, uh, it's a pass mark, so you should be accepted. It depends, uh, in de it depends on the, on the point re uh, rating, mm -hmm. but 65% uh, is the pass mark, the minimum. Okay, and no, there's no interview, it's based on the entrance exam, so for that question. Someone said, I'm a current third year medical student studying elsewhere. Would it be possible to get an exemption and start at a higher year? Unfortunately not. We accept, we don't, we do not recognize uh, courses from uh, other universities. If you pass the entrance exam, you would have to start from the scratch from the first year. I think if you're coming from outside of the Czech Republic as well, the problem is that you won't have the Czech language credits that are required in the year one as well. So you wouldn't even have completed all the required subjects from year one. And that's where one of the other problems lies, especially. Someone said the Czech embassy in Malaysia is closing after 10 days for two months, which may cause a problem with my visa. So do you recommend an alternative 
option. It's a difficult one. Uh, I might be to apply next year, or if you pass the entrance exam this year, your uh, we can uh, we can interrupt your study or admission for a year. I would also possibly speak to the embassy and see if there is an, an ability for you to apply through the, the embassy in Jakarta, in Indonesia. That may be a possibility. So if you speak to them, because you've got to prepare the other paperwork anyway, but do speak to the embassy and say, listen, because the embassy is closing, is it possible that my visa application or my visa interview at least be pushed down to the embassy in Jakarta, which I believe would be the closest embassy to, or maybe Bangkok, maybe Bangkok as well, to see if that will be the closest embassy and see if that is possibility. They may, it may be possible, it may be not, but the long, if you have that conversation with the embassy now, at least you'll have an idea that that, that may be something which is uh, doable. Someone's asked, Dylan, this is really a question for you. Is there a big language barrier between the students and the public in Brno? Uh, simple answer is no. Uh, in the medical faculty, with all the professors, all the instructors, all the doctors, all the staff, there is no problem at all. Uh, in the city centre as well, getting out and about, um, there's generally no problem. Um, it says you kind of go branch a little bit further out from the city centre and bearing in mind everything you possibly could ever need is in the city centre or around the city centre. Um, but if, for example, you are living further out or you're going to a shop, for example, a bit further out, um, then you may find that, um, you know, the levels of English will deteriorate, will go down a little bit. Um, but I haven't really found any problems with getting by with the Czech that we learned from the first year, at least. And you learn Czech for four years anyway, so you're, you become pretty proficient in the language. Right. Uh, Linda, Ben, will you assist uh, or direct us as to when to start the visa application? I will be doing. In fact, in your particular case, documents are in the translation with the, with the translator at the moment anyway. So once that's back then an appointment will be arranged at the embassy for you <clears throat> for the visa. Uh, so just waiting, but I don't tend to send that email until I've got the translation back because I need to make sure I've got all the documents in my hand before they will give us an appointment. So as I said, entire process is near enough there. It's just a question of waiting on one document to come back uh, into my office from translation. What is the study burden like? Dylan? your fourth year, okay? So... You can tell us perhaps more than anyone else. Study burden, I'm, I'm assuming that means sort of oh, work yeah. balance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so so like, like I sort of said before, you know, you've got five days a week, you've got classes all every, every day. Um, most days will be pretty full on uh, morning till evening with lectures and practical classes and seminars. Um, and also when you come home, you know, you are expected to study. You're expected to do assignments for things like check for um, medical terminology, which is Latin, um, for biology, biophysics, you have protocols, you'll do practical experiments and you'll be expected to do write-ups and submit them to the teachers for uh, within a certain deadline. So there's a lot of work which goes on, um, which has to go on sort of in the background as well. Um, obviously revision, there's gonna be constant tests. So biology, Latin, Czech, um, will have regular tests, partial tests throughout the semester. So you're, you're expected to use your time in the evenings and probably weekends as well to, to study. So it is a lot. It's also why I, I said before, there's really no time for, for a job. So, um, so that you're, you're, you're full-time studying pretty much. Um, and it, you know, you, it's not as bad as it sounds. There is time to relax. Um, but I, I would, I would always err on the side of caution. I would always start off from the first year, from the first couple of weeks, just, you know, strong start. Um, and this is what MIMSA will advise you as well. Um, get stuck in and you know uh, make it make make a good make a good start make a good impression from the first couple of weeks get into your studies uh, rhythm um, you know scope the subject uh, and then you'll 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 sail through the first semester I think if you do that okay so I said what's the COVID situation like in Bruno right now well I would say uh, as I said before we are fully open in this moment we have 700 positive cases in the whole Czech Republic. So I would say we are back in the normal life. We were, we were closed quite long time. And uh, I suppose, I would say everything is in normal in this moment. 
I think vaccinations rolling out now in the Czech. Oh Republic. yes, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm longer. already I'm already vaccinated as well. Uh, young people uh, around 30, 35 are also vaccinated. The vaccination goes according to the age. Yeah. Limit. Yeah. So does, does the fees of the course have to be paid in Czech Crown, US dollars or euros? It's all in Czech Crown, okay? Yes, but they can pay, you know, they can make a payment in uh, in uh, dollars or euro, just you have to check the daily rate, yeah? But of course, if you if you are doing the bank transfer, you can, uh, you can pay in dollars or in euros, just please check the daily rate. Online you can find what's the daily rate. With some of the third party providers like TransferWise, you actually say that you want how much you want to end up in the other account. So I yeah. say I want 300,000 check krone or 150,000 check krone in this account. And it tells you then what you need to pay in pounds or dollars or euro, whatever system that you're coming from. So I said, can you please let us know from current or last year, final year students, where they land up from a career perspective, specifically towards practice in the UK or for residency programs in the United States. So you need to know from that, I consider how many students are going to work in the UK or the US afterwards. Oh, well, I don't have that data, but Alina, I don't know if we have that, because obviously you've got international students from everywhere, so we don't always know where they go, but. Well, actually, I think the, 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 the old British, they went home and, uh, and as Dylan said, not only British, uh, they are they they are the other nationalities. I don't. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm afraid that uh, I'm not able to 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 hunt the the, the graduates. But uh, what I know what I know people have a jobs without the problems in a British or U.S. hospitals. We are fully recognized in the United States. Uh, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. That question that follows on, we can't connect you with individuals. Might be, might be Dylan can uh, provide you. You had some, uh, you had some workshop with uh, Stephen Gopal. Dylan, might be you uh, can provide the contacts for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, ben, if you if you want, I can I can send you that information yeah. for a graduate now. Actually, yeah. we do be careful on what we share, obviously, because. Uh, yeah. Going out to thousands of people uh, based on my yeah. what I see on YouTube. There, there, are, there are, you know, there are hundreds, hundreds of graduates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if anybody, if anybody wants to, if anybody wants some specific information, someone you know from the UK going to a specific part of the UK, whatever, you can get in touch with me if you want, if that's okay, and, and I can provide you with that information. Otherwise, I can contact Ben as well, and and we can do that in another way. The one thing to say as well is that a lot of the graduates who will be coming out, especially the British graduates or those who are going towards the UK, because the, the Maastricht University has a lot of links with UK hospitals, especially up at Nosley and also up in London and the Isle of Man as well, many students have jo job offers conditional on graduation and GMC licensure. So they've effectively got a job offer before graduation because they're in the last furlong. So uh, that is often the case that students do have that guarantee not yeah it's a guarantee effectively before they've even graduated yeah and can i just add one other thing as well with our with our qualification uh specifically for the uk we we graduate with um a full gmc license eligibility which means that we don't have to apply if we don't want to for a foundation one training position we can directly apply to foundation two it's not uh, something which everyone does but it's a it's something which um is a, i think a big advantage um so you can step into an f2 job after doing a, a few weeks or a couple of months of a of a clinical internship so um it's something which some graduates do someone's asked how are we allocated roommates well actually you will be allocated in case you will be choosing online uh the bed and the room if you have a friend that you would like to share uh share a, a room uh you you will write the you will uh, you will contact the staff what I know for hundred percent, after the arrival, students are able to move from the rooms. Yeah, so it shouldn't be a problem. the The, the problem uh, could be to get <laughs> to get a room, to get a bed. So please do not waste the time and apply immediately. Once the online application will be open in August, please submit application for the for the accommodation immediately. 
linked to that, this is the last question. So how can I get an accommodation letter even though the bookings don't start until August? Right. You have an accommodation letter in your offer paperwork. It is there. That the address on that is the head is basically the head office of the student dormitory. So you do have that accommodation letter saying that you are accommodated by Masaryk University. That's for the visa. It works perfectly. What you then need to do in August when the system opens is physically book the location of your accommodation. So you have the offer accommodation guarantee, which gets you through the visa already if you've already passed the entrance exam and received the paperwork from me. And then in August, that's when you book the specific bed or room. That's so. Yeah. It, but it's, it, I know it sounds a bit strange, but effectively you are guaranteed the accommodation because you have that letter which goes to support your visa. Uh, but you don't need to wait until August for that. But in August is a procedural. So we've answered all of the questions, well over 40 questions there actually, which was a really good uh, showing. And we've still got quite a lot of people online. Uh, what I would suggest we do is if there are any more questions now, let's give everyone five minutes. So what I mean, it's quarter past four in the UK. So we'll give everyone till just after 20 past four in the UK or 20 past five in the Czech Republic. If you've got any more questions at all, fire them now. If not, I think we'll just talk briefly about what's going to happen following this exam. So you will take the exam online. You've already, if you're taking the exam for Asia or North America, you would have already received the detail on how to log in. If you need to reset your password, just click on the I've forgotten my password link and then make your new password. And then when you log in at the appropriate time, you will then be able to go through the papers. Once you enter each paper, it then has a countdown of an hour for that paper. So make sure you enter it and are ready. Have your calculator ready, have some blank paper and a pen ready as well. So you're ready to prepare for that exam. Once you've done the exam, usually within a few days, I'll be given a list of who's passed, and then I'll be telling you all individually on email who's passed. However, before that, I will be emailing you all, probably over this weekend or early next week, about things that we need to bear in mind for starting a visa application anyway. That's so that when you do get the nod, you can immediately start requesting the paperwork you need for your visa. And then, uh, then when your offer paperwork comes through, it will come to the office here in the UK. Now, for UK students, I'm going to keep the paperwork with me for the meantime because I will need to send scans of that to the embassy. Then if the embassy call you for an appointment, that information will be sent to you by special delivery anyway. But just in case the embassy need any more scans or copies from me, it's good to have it secure here in one place. If you're not in the UK, the minute your paperwork arrives on my desk, DHL will come and pick it up and bring it to you. And DHL have been sending, getting documents delivered all over the world within two or three days of it leaving my office, often even the next day in major cities in the US, Middle East, or even Asia as well. So, just when the paperwork comes through, I'll let you know and I'll give you the indication that it's been sent out. And if you have been gone by DHL, it will come to you. You'll get an email from DHL with your way bill number on as well. Any problems with that, I'll let you know. But there will literally be no delay on getting the paperwork to you. In there, you'll have your offer letter. You'll have everything in English. And the important thing you will have is the invoice with a date for payment on. You need to pay 50% of the tuition fee. So for medicine, it's 130,000, sorry, 150,000 Czech krone. For dentistry, it's 165,000 Czech krone that you have to pay. Uh, and that will cover your first semester tuition fees. The remainder will be paid, I think, around about February time. Is that correct? Or March time, Helena? Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, the second, the second part of the payment will be before, Logically, the easy way to remember is always pay before the semester start. Yeah, yeah. so it will be in uh, in February. You will pay the second part. Just please, really, the deadline for the for this payment will be the end of June. Uh, please be informed that we will not be waiting for the delayed payment because we have a huge demand this year from EU and non EU applicants. Yeah, so. 
Okay. Do we verify our documents in August? Right. I'll explain the verification of documents. If you have already graduated from school, whether you've done IB or A levels, okay, we do we can do that from now once you've got your offer. Okay. So we would do that now. And then once the documents come back from the Apostyle office in the UK, we then pay the nostrification fee to the university and then we send the documents to the university by DHL as well prior to August. If you're an international baccalaureate candidate taking IB this year, we'll get your results say on the 5th or 6th of July and then we can start the process once we've got your results. There's a slightly different procedure if it's only results because we have to get a letter from your school because the full IB diploma won't be issued till later in the year. A-level candidates, if you're taking your A-levels in 2021, on the, by, on the 10th of August, once we know your results this year, we will simply require a letter from your school and a copy of your A-level certificate, yeah. A-level results. We need a letter from your school because on its own, the A-level results are not enough because eventually we do need the actual certificates. But a letter from your school with a very specific wording that I have a template for, you will get in advance and then we'll deal with that then. But if you're a student who has an offer and you've already graduated from high school and you have your certificates and transcripts in your hand, let's just start that process now. If you're in a country which is a member of something called the Hague Apostyle Convention, then we use that mechanism to legalize your documents. If you're from a country that's not in the Hague Convention, don't worry if you are or not at this moment, I will explain everything at the right time. Then we need to have a slightly different process. So if you're from Canada, for example, which is not in the Hague Convention, your documents need to be stamped by the Canadian Foreign Ministry and also by the Czech Embassy in Ottawa. If you're from an apostyle convention country, it's just a little bit easier. We don't need to involve the embassy at all. But I will explain that to you on your individual emails anyway. So please don't worry too much about that. We've done it hundreds of times. We know the system inside out. It just takes a little bit of time to explain it if it's something which is new to you. Okay, we're now coming up to 25 past. So if there's any last minute questions, be my guest. If not, then I'm going to say thanks for everyone who signed up. Really good uh, number of people signed up today, actually. Uh, really good uh, numbers coming through on Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube as well. And some fantastic questions, actually, which I'm really happy about. Uh, so that, that's been a really, really, really productive session. For those of you that are taking the entrance exam, good luck. If you do pass it, you're going to have a fantastic opportunity to follow in the steps of many Masaryk University graduates current students like Dylan as well. And all being well, I will be there if the COVID restrictions allow, I will be there with you in Brno in September. I've not been to Brno now, what will be for two years because I couldn't go last year, but I'll be there again to sample the fantastic food environment, beer, uh, the entire situation in, uh, in Brno. It's a lovely place to live. It's also massively well connected. One thing we didn't touch on in this presentation really was the other things to do. You know, your one hour, 20 minute train journey from Vienna, your two hour bus ride away from Prague. So there's plenty to see in and around the local area. So for those of you that are flying to the Czech Republic, if you're from London, you can fly into Brno or you can, guys can fly into Prague. Alternatively, you can fly into Vienna as well. And yeah. you can actually go and take from Vienna and then take a train direct from Vienna, well, take a bus actually, direct from Vienna Airport to the center of Brno or take a train to Vienna's main train station, take the train up to Brno from there as well. And then once you're in Vienna, you're in the Schengen zone. And that's the other thing for those students who need a visa for the Czech Republic and wouldn't be given the opportunity to kind of travel to Europe without a visa at all. Because you've got your study permit for the Czech Republic, in theory, you can walk all the way from Prague or Brno to Madrid to Lisbon yeah. without showing your passport. Not recommended. There are quicker ways of doing it. But you'll have an opportunity to see the whole of Europe for the next six years of your time in uh, the Czech Republic. And that's a, fa a fantastic opportunity not to be missed. Is there anything else that anyone wants to add while any last minute questions come in before we sign off in less than five minutes time? I think uh, if you check the website, uh, there is a contact for deal, uh, Dylan, the email, or uh, Dylan, if you can type your email uh, in into the chat. 
and uh, if you need if you need if you need any any information from the student side or if you want to get a contact for the for our former students for our graduates uh, and uh, for current doctors in the uh, UK, I think you can write email to, to Dylan. Mm. Yeah. And you've also got the MIMSA Facebook group as well, which yeah. is a fantastic opportunity because as well as Dylan, you've got other members of MIMSA are in there as well, able to answer questions. Okay, without any further ado, I think, I think, uh, I think it's time for, to close off our Friday. Uh, Thank you so much for everyone who's joined today and asked questions. Really, thank you to Deal who's given time out of his studies to answer the questions today and meet you guys uh, in this virtual session. Hopefully, some of you will be meeting him in person in September. Uh, and hopefully, I'll be there with you in the Czech Republic in Brno for the fantastic uh, resource that is there as well at the faculty. Uh, we usually have a very good time in Brno as well. And we get to have, we also do things like getting your travel permits and getting your SIM cards. And we do all the things that you need to do when you arrive in another country. It's a very simple pr uh, procedure, but sometimes you need a little bit of help. And that's what we are here to do for you as well. So thank you, Helena. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Susanna, for the presentation again. I think we'll let everyone go. I think there's a few more in the chat, which I think is just I will yeah, just so put into the chat the link for uh, for on the website, please, med.muni.cz. Okay. You can find uh, the list of our ambassadors. We have uh, students ambassadors for individual countries, and Dylan is one of them. Okay. So feel free to contact any any representative that uh, that you will see. Okay. Yeah. Thank and thanks everyone. Uh, a lot of, I think we get so many comments about people who found this session really positive and it has been a really good session and very helpful. So thank you again. It's time to go home uh, and have a great safe weekend, everyone. And hopefully we'll see some of you in Bruno in September. Take care. Have a good weekend. Take care. Hope to see you.